Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, uh, whatever properties uh, that we have actually postponed in the last lecture about simple roots, uh, I will prove now. Okay. Uh, so, these uh, basic properties are uh, going to play uh, vital role later. So, let us uh, uh, prove them actually uh, they are very important in order to understand the set of roots. Okay, so, let me call it as lemmas. So, here is the lemma A. So, what it says? So, if we start with a positive root which is not simple, then you will be able to subtract some simple root from that root which is so that it remains positive. Okay. If alpha coming from phi. So, let us fix this, this uh, simple roots pi inside phi. So, this is set of simple roots or basis. Okay. So, now everything related to this pi. If alpha is in phi and assume that alpha is not in pi. So, this is not simple. So, then there exists beta. Okay. There exists beta which is from pi such that this alpha minus beta this is actually a root. So, if we assume alpha is positive then we can make sure that this alpha minus beta is also a positive. Okay. So, how one does this? Uh, recall from our earlier uh, discussion. So, we observe that if, if you take elements of pi so, they are all they make obtuse angle between them. Okay. So, any two elements if alpha beta is in okay, let us say alpha dash beta dash is in pi. So, then beta dash alpha dash must be less than or equal to 0 unless alpha dash is not equal to beta dash. So, this is what we observe. We also observed one more thing. So, let me recall here. If we have pi set of roots, okay. so this is just even a subset of E. Okay. This is just a finite subset let us say. So, this is a finite subset of E such that let us say you label it as alpha 1 etcetera alpha L. So, if alpha i alpha j. So, this inner product is less than or equal to 0 whenever i not equal to j and there exists gamma inside E such that these alpha i's lie on the one side of the gamma for all 1 to L. So, then this data will force that pi is linearly independent. Okay. So, this is something we already proved. Okay. So, this is actually nature of a base okay. that is why this if we take this pi of gamma we proved that the pi of gamma satisfies all these conditions. So, in particularly pi of gamma becomes a base. So, now for any finite subset that makes obtuse angle between the roots uh, between the elements okay, and then stays on one side of the hyperplane defined by some gamma. So, then that must be linearly independent that what it says. Okay. So, now in particularly if we take uh, this alpha okay, here is the proof. If we assume this alpha with inner product with beta is less than or equal to 0 for all beta inside pi. So, then what happens? So, you can identify pi with pi of gamma. Okay. So, there is a regular element gamma such that pi equal to pi of gamma in particularly phi plus will become equal to phi plus of gamma. Okay. So, then what happens? So, that means this alpha gamma is positive and we also have beta alpha is less than or equal to 0 for all beta in pi. So, now using this observation that we have on the side here we can see that this pi union alpha this becomes linearly independent this becomes linearly independent. 
So, that is observed because pi is the base already of your E. So, that is the contradiction. So, that contradiction forces that this uh, uh, there exists beta inside pi such that this alpha beta must be positive. Okay. If alpha beta is positive then using the lemma that we had earlier you can immediately conclude that beta minus alpha sorry alpha minus beta. So, both are root actually alpha minus beta that is what we want. So, this is a root again. Okay. So, now you write alpha as summation k gamma gamma where gamma coming from pi. So, now if you subtract you can see that this k gammas are all non negative integers okay and you can also see that this k gamma must be positive for some gamma not equal to beta otherwise what will happen alpha will become multiple of uh, beta okay so k gamma is non negative integer for all gamma in pi and there exists gamma inside pi such that uh, this k gamma must be positive and this gamma must be not equal to beta. So, why such uh, k gamma exist otherwise what will happen this k gamma will be 0 for all gamma not equal to beta. So, then that will force alpha is multiple of k beta. So, that is uh, multiple of beta. So, that is absurd. So, that forces this is true. In particularly if you take alpha minus beta you can see that this is nothing but in particularly this k gamma dash gamma dash where gamma dash in pi minus beta will be there. So, then this k gamma gamma minus beta. So, this part will still survive inside the summation. Okay. So, that makes it this alpha minus beta is actually again positive as k gamma inside alpha minus beta is still positive integer. Okay. So, that proves that this alpha minus beta is positive again that forces that all coefficients of this alpha minus beta is positive. So, that means alpha minus beta is again positive. Okay. So, as a corollary you can immediately see that if I start with any beta inside p plus then this beta can be written as some alpha 1 plus etcetera some alpha t where this alpha is comes from pi uh, in a such a way that in such a way that if you take any partial sum each partial sum alpha 1 plus etcetera plus alpha i this will be again positive root. Okay. So, this is something you can prove using induction and earlier lemma. So, use induction on the height of beta and the lemma that we proved earlier. So, this lemma a. Okay. So, using this you can complete the proof I am not going to do it. So, now uh, this is something very interesting observation this color I will tell you like what will be the Lie algebra uh, like input for this corollary. So, basically we seen that uh, if we take this sim semi simple Lie algebra corresponding to this uh, root system phi. So, this is generated by g alpha where alpha coming from phi. So, this is what we proved okay. because if you recall g is actually h direct sum direct sum g alpha alpha comes from phi this is what we had. So, then it is not hard to see uh, h is actually sub, sub uh, algebra of this uh, sub algebra generated by g alpha alpha in phi that forces g equal to g alpha. But indeed later we will prove so, later we will prove that g must be actually equal to g alpha where alpha comes from pi. 
So, only the simple roots are good enough to so root spaces corresponds to simple roots they are good enough to actually generate this entire G. So, that is what we will prove later. So, in particularly G beta for each beta so let us take beta to be just comes from phi plus. So, then the G beta will be sub space of this uh, G alpha alpha generated by pi. Since these are all one dimensional spaces you can see that this x beta that comes from g beta. So, that must be exactly equal to the Lie product generated by this g alpha. So, indeed what one can prove, so this is something one can use uh, Jacobi identity and then prove. So, use Jacobi identity and prove that this x beta can be written as x alpha 1 bracket etcetera bracket x alpha 2 bracket x alpha t minus 1 comma x alpha t where these x alpha i's will come from g alpha i where alpha i will come from pi ok. So, this is some particular way of getting uh, these uh, uh, leave words. So, these are called right norm leave words. So, once we know that g alpha generate alpha in pi then it is immediate that x alpha will generate when alpha coming from pi. So, in particularly ok sorry we have to use both x alpha as well as minus alpha. So, what I said is wrong. So, we have we can prove that g is generated by both g alpha as well as g minus alpha ok. So, in particularly uh, this g beta for beta p plus uh, you can claim that this will be inside uh, your subalgebra generated by g alpha alpha in pi. So, which you can prove that it is generated by x alpha alpha coming from pi. So, now uh, using Jacobi identity since this is lies inside this subalgebra generated by x alpha alpha in pi. So, this can be actually x beta can be written as uh, Lie product of this form ok. This is called right normed levered right normed levered formed from this x alphas. So, now you can see that so this bracket must be non zero as well as any given any i the bracket must be non zero. So, that means this beta is first of all alpha 1 plus etcetera plus alpha t and alpha t and alpha t plus alpha t minus 1 all of them must be roots there is no other option this is in phi plus this is in phi plus and so on alpha i plus etcetera plus alpha t that is also should be in phi plus because this sum corresponds to taking bracket up to i ok because the successive bracket should be non zero because x beta is non zero. So, this is the Lie algebra interpretation of the same result, but uh, in the uh, root system case it is not that hard to prove, but this also means something in uh, Lie algebras that is what I wanted to say. Okay, this is about some particular root spaces or the root vectors generating G that is what it reflects. Okay, let us get back. Uh, so, this is the lemma that I left it as exercise before I am going to prove it now. So, this is about simple reflections. So, you start with alpha inside your pi then S alpha of phi plus difference alpha. So, that is permuted by S alpha. So, that means this is mapped to phi plus difference alpha. So, how one verify this? This is easy. You start with beta which is in phi plus difference alpha. So, that means beta is not equal to alpha. So, beta you write it as summation k gamma gamma where gamma coming from pi. Okay. Now, you know that this k gammas they are all coming from z plus because this beta is in phi plus. 
So now beta is not proportional to alpha. So again therefore there exists gamma inside your pi which is different from alpha such that k gamma is positive. Okay. So but the coefficient if you look at on s alpha of beta. So s alpha of beta is nothing but beta minus 2 beta alpha divided by alpha alpha alpha. So that means in s alpha of beta only the coefficient of alpha will be changed. So that means this k gamma is unaltered. So that implies that the coefficient of gamma in s alpha beta is still k gamma which is positive that forces that s alpha beta must be positive because all other coefficients also must be non-negative. So since s alpha of beta is not equal to alpha because beta is not multiple of alpha so that implies that s alpha of phi plus difference alpha is exactly equal to phi plus difference alpha. Note that s alpha of alpha is minus alpha. So this is the only element that is sent to negative by alpha inside positive roots. Okay. So in particularly as a corollary this is something I worked out already. If you set delta to be of some of this uh, positive roots, so then it is clear that s alpha of delta must be exactly delta minus alpha. So this is a simple computation that one can easily do. So now uh, we prove this uh, another result which we left it as exercise. So this we call it lemma C. So what it says uh, okay, to prove our result which is about the expression uh, if you write sigma as product of simple reflections such that uh, the number of reflections that are involved in that uh, uh, expression is as small as possible. So this is the result uh, that we, we actually uh, left it as exercise. If you take sigma to be s alpha 1 etcetera s alpha t where s alpha i coming from uh, your sorry alpha i's are coming from your pi and t is as small as possible. So then we concluded that uh, this sigma of alpha t that must be negative. So this is the exercise that I left. So to prove that uh, we need some important uh, observation. So let us make that observation. So you take this alpha 1 etcetera alpha t which is coming from pi okay. and you assume that these are all not necessarily distinct. This is not necessarily distinct. So you write this s i to be s alpha i. So then uh, if you if you know that this uh, s 1 etcetera s t minus 1 applied on alpha t is negative. So then you can prove that there exist yes 1 less than or equal to s less than t such that this s1 etc s t is exactly equal to s1 etc s so maybe we will call it uh, a 1 less than or equal to a less than t such that s1 etc s t is same as s1 etc s a minus 1 times s a plus 1 etc s t minus 1. So what it says basically in this expression s1 etc s t s1 etc s a a minus 1 a s a s a plus 1 etc s t is there t minus 1 s t. So we will be able to remove these two reflections in the expressions of product of SI. So that is what it says. 
okay so this is called what is called deletion condition okay this deletion condition actually plays an important role uh, if we think uh, about this while group okay so basically one can prove that maybe we will do it during the one of the uh, problem solving session okay so this is called this lemma d lemma c is called deletion condition okay so here is the remark lemma c is called deletion property or deletion condition for the while group of w and this deletion property will imply w is a coxter group okay so coxter groups are our groups that are actually generated by reflections so it's a abstractly defined group so let's not get into the definitions now okay so later in one of the problem solving session i will actually prove uh, this deletion properties indeed gives us w being coxter group which is not very important for this course that's why I'm, i don't want to do it but what it says whenever you have these condition that s1 etc st minus 1 applied on alpha t if that is negative then we will be able to delete uh, one element in the expression in the middle and this last reflection st okay that means this uh, if we take this sigma which is product s1 etc st then this t is not indeed smallest possible okay so if sigma equal to s1 etc st and this s1 etc st minus 1 of alpha t is negative so then that implies that sigma can be written as product s1 etc sa minus 1 sa plus 1 etc st minus 1 you can see that if you define the length to be the minimal t such that sigma equal to s1 etc st then the length of this sigma actually goes down by 2 okay so we will talk about length later let's uh, let's not worry about now uh, so let's prove this lemma c and then as an application we will also get uh, uh, this uh, exercise okay so how to prove this so all we have is so this alpha 1 etc alpha t they are all simple roots not necessarily distinct roots okay we have also set this si to be s sigma sorry s alpha i so what is given given is s1 etc st minus 1 alpha of t this is negative okay so what we do we take beta i so this is by definition you take it to be si plus 1 etc s t minus 1 applied on alpha t and this is defined for i from 0 to t minus 2 note that beta of t minus 1 by definition it is just alpha t so this is the convention that we make so now you can see that beta of 0 so that is going to be s1 etc s t minus 1 applied on alpha t this is negative and what is beta t minus 1 which is the starting point so that is positive so that means if you go from beta t minus 1 to beta 0 it goes from positive to negative so in every step if you go down so beta t minus 1 is positive beta t minus 1 to let's say it is positive and so on so up at some point so there will be a index a so there exists index a which is lies between this 0 uh, not exactly 0 is between 1 and t minus 2 uh, such that for which okay there exists index a for which beta s will be positive because you are going down by beta t minus 1 beta t minus 2 etc beta sorry beta a so beta a is positive but when you go down beta a minus 1 okay so that is negative let us say 
So, this beta is positive, but beta a minus 1 is negative, but what is beta a? Okay. So, you can see that uh, So, this beta a is positive and what is uh, uh, beta a minus 1? So, beta a minus 1 is nothing but s i plus 1 that is a applied on just beta of a and this is negative. So, beta a is positive and S a beta a is negative, but you already know that S a being simple reflection. So, S a maps phi plus difference alpha a to phi plus difference alpha a. So, that means this beta a forced to be alpha a because beta a is being positive and it sent to negative. So, that forces beta a to be alpha a. So, now uh, in particularly we can see that. So, recall for any sigma okay, for any sigma in w we know that sigma s alpha sigma inverse is nothing but s of sigma of alpha. So, this is already there. So, that means, so if you apply this sigma a plus 1 etcetera sigma t minus 1 on this sigma t. Okay. So, I am mixing sigma and s. So, let us go back to s. So, this is s, s a plus 1, s t minus 1 applied on this s t and then you take the conjugation s t minus 1 etcetera s a plus 1. So, then you can see that this is going to be exactly equal to s of. So, this is sigma this is sigma inverse. So, this is going to be sigma of alpha t okay but this is exactly equal to so if you go back uh, to your uh, sigma a so that is okay s of a which is s sigma of a so, you can see that sorry where are we. Uh, so, we proved that beta of a is must be alpha of a. Okay. So, that means beta of a minus 1 is S a of alpha of a which is minus alpha of a. So, what is beta of a? So, beta of a is exactly equal to s a plus 1 etcetera s a plus 1 etcetera s t minus 1 of alpha of t. Okay. So, that means beta of a is exactly sigma applied on alpha of t. So, which is exactly alpha of a. Okay, so, that is what it says. So, now if you combine them together you can see that this S sigma of alpha t is exactly S a. Okay. So, now if you substitute it back uh, this equation that is S a plus 1 etcetera S t minus 1 S t S t minus 1 etcetera S a plus 1 is exactly equal to S a. If you substitute back uh, inside your S 1 etcetera S t. For example, this can be rewritten as S a plus 1 etcetera 
S T minus 1 S T is exactly equal to S A S A plus 1 etcetera S T minus 1. So, you can replace this by this in S 1 etcetera S T. So, then we get S 1 etcetera S T equal to S 1 etcetera S A S A plus 1 etcetera S T minus 1 S T. So, this is what we want to replace. You can see that this is exactly S 1 etcetera S A S A S A plus 1 etcetera S T minus 1 which is exactly S A S A will be square will be identity. So, then that implies this is exactly S 1 etcetera S A minus 1 S A plus 1 etcetera S T minus 1. So, this proves that we can remove that index S A. So, S 1 etcetera S T is same as S 1 etcetera S A minus 1, S A plus 1 etcetera S T minus 1. So, the deletion property is satisfied by Y group that is what it says. So, now let us prove that exercise that is we promised. Okay, let us write sigma equal to S 1 etcetera S T and where this S i is are S alpha i is where alpha is coming from pi take t to be minimal possible. Okay. So, now what we want to prove? We want to prove that sigma of alpha t that must be negative. Okay. So, what happens if it is positive? So, let us look at uh, this sigma of alpha t. Okay. So, if we take the sigma of alpha t, you can see that this is exactly equal to S 1 etcetera S t minus 1 S t alpha of t, but S t of alpha t is nothing but minus alpha t. So, then it gives us S 1 etcetera S t minus 1 of minus alpha t. So, this is exactly equal to minus S 1 etcetera S t minus 1 of alpha t. Now, suppose this is negative then that forces this sigma of alpha t is positive. Okay. So, sigma of alpha t is negative if and only if S 1 etcetera S t minus 1 of alpha t is positive. But you can see that if S 1 etcetera S t of minus 1 of alpha t is negative then from the deletion property we will be able to remove some index A. So, that is what this uh, deletion property tells us. So, that means uh, since T is as minimal as possible we will not be able to remove uh, any index S A from this uh, product expression S 1 etcetera S T. So, that forces that this S 1 etcetera S T f minus 1 of alpha T must be positive and that forces that the sigma alpha t is negative. So, that proves what we are what we actually promised to prove. Okay. So, so let, let me just summarize what we have done so far and then I will stop. So, here is the summary. So, summary about uh, set of bases and so on. So, we started with the root system phi we define what is called base. Okay. So, we proved that any basis, okay, the set of bases of phi are given by pi of gamma where gamma comes from regular, okay, gamma just regular. Okay. And we also proved that pi of gamma equal to pi of gamma dash if and only if phi plus of gamma is exactly equal to phi plus of gamma dash if and only if the chamber defined by gamma is same as the chamber defined by gamma dash. So, these are all the things that we proved and then we proved that the while group acts simply transitively on the set of bases. Equivalently, it acts simply transitively on 
the set of positive roots as well as the set of chambers. Okay. So, that means given any uh, root simple roots okay. so pi pi dash so they are bases let us say there exists unique w and w such that w of pi dash equal to pi. So, this is what we have proved so far. On the way we also proved that if we take w pi union w in capital W that must be exactly phi. So, this is also something we proved that means any root must be W conjugate to a simple root. Okay. So, these are all the things uh, that we have proved so far. And then we also understood some basic properties of uh, the simple roots. So, that is what I did it today. Okay, I will stop here and uh, I will continue with uh, actually uh, classification of uh, uh, root systems. For that purpose, we need to write uh, given root system as uh, uh, direct sum of irreducible root systems. So, we will see in the next class how to do those things. Okay, I will stop. Thanks.